During the war between Israel and the Hamas in the Gaza Strip, six Chinese naval vessels have been active in the Middle East region. As per an announcement from the Chinese Ministry of Defense, the 44th Naval Escort Task Force has been engaged in routine operations in the area. In the previous week, they additionally carried out a collaborative drill with the Omani Navy while visiting Oman. After the conclusion of its trip to Oman, the Chinese Naval Escort Task Force arrived at Shuwaik Port in Kuwait as planned on the morning of October 18th. The Chinese naval contingent commenced a five-day diplomatic visit to Kuwait. The Chinese Ministry of Defense said, guided by Kuwaiti naval patrol craft Filaka, warships of the Chinese task force, including ship Zebo, ship Jingzhou, and ship Kiandahu, docked at Shuwaik Port. They were welcomed by more than 200 people, including representatives of the Kuwaiti military, staff of the Chinese embassy in Kuwait, and overseas Chinese. This task force originates from the People's Liberation Army Eastern Division and consists of the Zebo, a Type 052D guided missile destroyer, the frigate Jingzhou, and the integrated supply ship Kiandahu. With tensions escalating in the region, the presence of six Chinese vessels in Middle Eastern waters has gained growing significance. The disclosure of Chinese warships in the area coincides with an expansion of the United States presence in the same region. Following the attack by Hamas on Israel, the United States deployed its most advanced carrier, the USS Gerald R. Ford, along with its associated battle group to the eastern Mediterranean. Additionally, the Dwight Eisenhower Carrier Strike Group is currently en route to the region. The Pentagon has recently disclosed the deployment of an extra command ship, the USS Mount Whitney, to the eastern Mediterranean. On October 19th, the USS Kearney, an Arleigh Burke-class guided missile destroyer, effectively intercepted and rendered harmless multiple Houthi missiles and unmanned aerial vehicles in the Red Sea. Interceptions of Houthi missile launches by the United States are extremely rare, underscoring the significance of this event, particularly in light of the escalating tensions in Israel. It is worth mentioning that in October 2016, the USS Mason utilized countermeasures to thwart an attempted attack in the Red Sea, which was aimed at the Navy destroyer and other vessels in close proximity. In reaction to that episode, the United States conducted a strike using sea-launched cruise missiles on Houthi radar facilities in Yemen. Nonetheless, the presence of both Chinese and U.S. warships serves as a distinct indicator of the participation of these two global powers in the region. This development occurs at a time when tensions have heightened between the two nations because of the Ukraine conflict, with China aligning itself alongside Russia. The probability of direct confrontations between these two naval forces in this region remains relatively low, unlike the occasional encounters seen in the Pacific. Because the Chinese Naval Task Group is only involved in a five-day diplomatic visit to Kuwait, the commander of the Chinese Task Force remarked, this year marks the fifth anniversary of the establishment of the China-Kuwait Strategic Partnership and also the 10th anniversary of the Belt and Road Initiative. We aspire that this visit will foster mutual understanding and trust, as well as stimulate exchanges and collaboration between the two nations and their military forces. The Chinese Ministry of Defense mentioned that during the visit, both parties will partake in reciprocal visits, onboard receptions, military exchanges, and engage in cultural and sports activities. China and Russia hold a common stance on the Palestinian issue and intend to collaborate in an effort to de-escalate the situation and contribute to the establishment of a two-state solution for Israel and the Palestinians. Jai Jun, serving as China's special envoy to the Middle East, made these remarks following a meeting in Qatar with Mikhail Bogdanov, who holds the position of the Russian president's special representative for the Middle East and Africa. He said, the fundamental reason for the current situation of the Palestine-Israel conflict is that the Palestinian people's lawful national rights have not been guaranteed. China and Russia have the same position on the Palestine question, and China is ready to maintain communication and coordination with Russia to promote de-escalation of the situation. 
According to him, both nations aim to play a constructive role in facilitating the resumption of peace talks between Palestine and Israel, effectively realizing the two-state solution and advancing a comprehensive, equitable, and lasting resolution to the Palestinian issue as soon as possible. China dispatched Jai to the Middle East with the objective of advocating for a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas, demonstrating its growing ambition to assume a more substantial role in the region. Both sides affirmed their unwavering commitment to closely coordinating their endeavors toward the political resolution of this and other conflicts in the Middle East and North Africa region. China perceives the United States as having a pro-Israel stance and, although it opposes attacks on civilians, it hasn't explicitly condemned the initial Hamas attack that triggered the recent conflict. Instead, China has called for an immediate ceasefire to protect civilians, particularly as Israel conducts airstrikes on Gaza, raising the possibility of a ground invasion. Beijing characterizes Hamas as a resistance movement and does not designate it as a terrorist group, in contrast to Israel and some other countries that do label it as such. Analysts suggest that China aims to establish itself as a mediator and strengthen its influence in the region, particularly as the U.S. redirects its global focus elsewhere. However, the recent conflict in Gaza has drawn the U.S. back into the region, as evidenced by President Joe Biden's visit to Israel. Jai also held discussions with Qatar's Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, Mohammed Abdulaziz al khalifi as reported by the Chinese Foreign Ministry. Foreign Ministry mentioned that Jai would be visiting additional Middle Eastern nations, although they did not provide any additional information or specifics. On the other side, Egyptian Prime Minister Mostafa Madbouli conveyed to Chinese leader Xi Jinping earlier this week that Egypt and other Arab nations hold China's unwavering and equitable stance on the Palestinian issue in high regard and anticipate China's greater involvement in resolving the present crisis, as stated in a Chinese report on their meeting. Middle East is an important region for China because a significant portion of its oil imports comes from the Middle East, particularly from countries like Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Iraq. Ensuring a stable and uninterrupted supply of energy resources is vital for China's economic growth, and this has led to a deepening engagement in the region. The country has been actively investing in various infrastructure projects across the Middle East, including the development of ports, railways, and energy facilities. These investments not only support China's economic interests, but also provide economic development opportunities for Middle Eastern countries. China has also expressed concerns about Uyghur movements and has cooperated with some Middle Eastern countries on counterterrorism efforts. Although their approach is contradictory and double standard in some respects, China seems likely to challenge the United States with a stronger Middle East policy in the long run.